then this pastiche, this idea. Great. <laughs> but this is exactly the idea. It's not even, it's a little bit of wording and it's a little bit of fonts and we get it. We don't have to think about it too much. The, loop, the feedback loop is so fast that we know it, we're all in the same conversation and we all are knowing where this is going to. And that's why I chose this one. <laughs> uh, again, you know, mythology, we think we know what mythology is, we think we know where mythology is going, we're recreating the same archetypes, but actually I don't think we know anything. And that is where we're, I believe we're starting to get stuck in the same kind of rotation of myths and memes again and again and again, that everything is self-referencing the other thing. So, you know, I'm going to point it out. The guy is talking about the guy, Gene Wilder, uh, 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 Willy Wonka from the 1970s one, is making fun of our knowledge of mythology. But he's actually, there's so many different levels of what we understand here that this is mythology thing for me. This is we're creating an archetype. He's the jester uh, who's laughing me back at us at our knowledge. So he is our hero's journey in a very quick, instant moment of understanding. We're all in a joke. And that's one. <laughs> I mean, if this is mythology and creation at a moment, notice, um, the speed of the occurrence of this, I think mean, this is one of the first times that it really went very fast. Um, from the spraying of the kids to all these different uh, artistic explosions of this officer, to I even saw him on t-shirts uh, spraying butterflies on people. You know, it's, it's, it's become so crazy. Um, and, uh, and I think that's, that's where we're going. I think that's a, that's a very big question is where do we go from here? Now that we've put our big uh, mentor character, our modern mentor character of Yoda with our oppressor from our mainstream, what happens next? So that's a big question for tonight. So we have three amazing speakers tonight. First one I want to be is Mitch Schultz. Um, Mitch began his life with journey in Memphis, Tennessee, and has since called Texas, Minnesota, Colorado, New York City uh, as his home. Uh, from early age, his love of art, music, mythology, and anything curiously unusual filled his path, including collaboration with Doris Roberts, synthetic pictures, and development of hybrid collective spectral alchemy. Mitch, will you join us?
counterculture, uh, filmmaker, writer, and everything in between from a PA on the set to, uh, to producer and everything. So it's a combination of things, especially in this transmedia world. It cannot be locked down to just one specific thing. And those of you that do work in the media scale, I'm sure you understand what that is, especially in the independent world. So. All right, so like I said, the DMT and Spirit Molecule film is what really changed a lot of things for me. The transformation came very quickly. At the same time, it has been a developing process for myself and also for my work. The, let me ask you another question. How many people are familiar with DMT? I'm just going to ask that first. Okay, all right. Briefly, what, what it is, DMT is a compound. It's a very simple compound that comes from tryptophan. Uh, naturally produced in your bodies, all over nature as well, from plants and animals. There's the strongest psychedelic. Uh, it takes people to other dimensions. Uh, so, so they say, so we're trying to figure out. Talks to, talking to aliens, talking to entities, and also brings pretty regularly a mystical experience uh, that comes along with that. And it really changes your, your paradigm, or challenges your paradigm. You have to reconsider everything that you thought Everything that you thought was right, and everything that you thought was the way to move forward, all of that all of a sudden gets challenged. And that's definitely what happened to me, and it started to change all aspects of my life. Um, just do a simple thing of opening a door for somebody and giving somebody a smile. That right there to me can, can hack culture in some ways. So, then I start looking at this media scape and the internet and the connectivity uh, that we have at our disposal today. There's a lot of utopian aspects that are built into that. Uh, at the same time, I think we see a lot of the issues and the problems that go along with that. But I think there's a way that we can start to harness that and utilize that, uh, that power and that development to, to start to pull in some of these ideas that have maybe been hidden to the rest of the world, to sort of pull them in and see what they can teach us uh, in Western culture or you know, pulling from other parts of the world that can expand our knowledge base, um, expand our perception, and, and our view on the entire world, which I, again, believe makes a new mythology. It gives us something new to, uh, to look at the world. So, during this process, I started to come up with what I found, and this does kind of tap into the tetra here, uh, a four-part manifesto that starts to give people an entry point into how we can redefine our mythologies and our ways of being. Uh, that starts with consciousness. And it's that conscious awareness of, all right, who am I? How did I get here? What am I doing? Uh, but knowing that you are a, a being that is alive and well and able to interact, and it's a miracle that we are here. Um, and and how, are you to, how are you taking that out of the world and sharing that with other people? Moving from that, once we come back from that kind of self-awareness, what is this 3D environment that we're living in? What is nature? And how are we fully connected to it? Um, what are we doing to grow our food? How are we treating animals? How are we treating each other? These are all important things that I think sometimes we can just kind of get lost in the day-to-day -day grind and we you know, kind of push that stuff off to the side, but it can be those simple little things that can make a huge difference. The next part is that representation. Once we have that conscious awareness, uh, we, we recognize that within ourselves, we take that back out into the world, how are we representing that? Uh, whether that be through music, uh, painting, dance, everything in between, um, whatever that specialty is or whatever drives you, how are you sharing that with the world? And the last part of this manifesto and kind of the focus is mythology and language and the power of language that feeds into these mythologies and these stories that really dictate everything that we do in our lives. Seems like a very simple thing, but I think, again, a lot of us kind of lose track on how a lot of these traditions have ruled us for the last 2,000 plus years. So. Excuse me while I take a drink of my wonderful beverage, much wanted. <laughs> Transmedia. source 
mythology or approach to mythology that we can take. Looking at those four previous sections that I just talked about, how do we start to tap into this technology, share ideas with one another, and be able to open this thing up, see what the similarities are between these different traditions. Um, how do they represent love? How do they represent God? How do they represent nature? What are the similarities there? What are the differences? And why are there differences? What also I think we're starting to see with this technology is we look back into, into the past, we start to see that our, our vision has widened a little bit. We have a little bit of a, a, a scope that is much broader than we had even five years ago, much more if we go back a whole century. But there, there's an ability there to, to look back, hopefully learn from whatever mistakes we may have made, look at the positives that came out of whatever that was, and how we can hopefully take that into the future, um, again, with an open source approach to get people to start collaborating, talking um, together, and not pushing everything off to the side. It's important that everybody's story is told. And this is where I think it, it comes into the power of individual stories. You know, how are we telling our own story to help build this, this bigger collective? So we came back to this transmedia idea. Um, and this open source mythology, what is it that activates people, that brings audiences together, and brings communities together, and then also gives them the power to go do something about that, whatever that issue may be? Um, what are these, who are these activators? Um, I would imagine that a lot of us in this room that are activators, and what are we doing to participate in that dialogue and create this new mythology? Maya set me up for this one here. Um, I won't go into too much of, <coughs> well, I won't go into anything on the clue right now, but I, those of you who haven't spent much time with this work, I highly recommend it. The man was definitely a visionary, saw things way before they've happened, and you know, he could have easily been a contemporary today, as Maya said, to, to really write this and open up the idea of the Tetra. These four projects that are listed here are the, the base of, of the, the general mythified manifesto, as I call them. So DMT, the spirit molecule, is about consciousness. Um, again, giving us that awakening or a sense of um, other broaderness. Broaderness, is that what? <laughs> Grounded being is the second part of this, and this is going to be looking at sustainability. Uh, in general, just, again, how are we growing our food? How are we treating the animals? What are we doing in this three-dimensional space to make sure that it is a sustainable environment? Global Beat Fusion is going to be the heart piece. And what we're doing here is looking at the computer as the first global folk instrument. And all of the musicians around the world now are essentially using the computer in some way, shape, or form to share their traditional mythologies and their traditional music. And so we kind of see that travel around the world and then how it's implemented back into the digital space to share with the modern world. And the last one is the open source reality. And that is going to be working on, on language, Joseph Campbell, story stuff, and then getting into McLuhan of what all this means, or potentially means, because we just don't know, but we do have the Tetrad to kind of look at possibilities. So this is kind of the basis of Mythify. Um, Mythify is an experience that we're setting up. It's a, I guess you want to call it just an interactive experience, but it's a transmedia experience. And what we're doing with all of our projects um, is taking this open source approach to try to broaden this mythology. So we are putting out all of our content via Creative Commons, sharing it with our community, and asking people to go make their own stories with it as well. There's so much content that sits there unused. And as a filmmaker, I'm sure many of you probably know, like we use 1% of our interview footage from our interviews in the DMT film. And there's so much great content there, I couldn't imagine just letting it sit there in my home. How do we get that thing out there? And how do these bigger stories, or even more stories, start to tell Bigger narrative. Four minutes. Okay. <laughs> so the what we're doing with this Mythify experience is we have these four entry points set up. So we have mind, and then in, underneath each one of these, there are three different sections. Mind is for the consciousness, or the DMT aspect, or the conscious aspect. Uh, we go into eco, and that's anything kind of earth-based, whether it be mineral, plants, or animals. Um, use is the third part of that. Anything that is creative, any sort of representation that you're looking at in the world and trying to represent it in some sort of artistic approach. 
And then the last one is going to be our ethos section. And that's how we're starting to define what our value systems are in the modern world. Um, I think we all have our individual value systems, and a lot of them have been based off of, well, I would say some false views uh, that have been fed through the media and through different power organizations over time, but I think that's starting to shift. And this ground up and this bottom up approach is really starting to be the one that is telling the stories, the actual true stories. So I'm going to run through just really quick. On top of the other three films from the manifesto, besides the DMT one, we have six other films. And Marcy, I hope I'm not speaking out too early here, but I'm going to just throw it out there. <laughs> um, just run through a few of these. Uh, the Origins of Consciousness was a tour that we did over in Australia earlier this year with Graham Hancock and Dennis McKenna, uh, covering everything from psychedelics to original tribal stories. Uh, Grand work looking at uh, cave paintings and what sort of representations were there from our early ancestors and what did they mean? Essentially, what did they mean? Um, Recoding the Transformation is going to be looking at the Culture Earth Festival and Transformational Culture Festival. What's happening on an edge there? You know, 